Hello, wonderful people. How are you doing? Thank you so much for the love you've shown me so far. Thank you for everything. Thank you, my new subscribers. Thank you, my returning subscribers. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Please keep the love growing. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. I appreciate it so, so much. You are the best. Uh, this afternoon, just let's just have chit chat, just to rub minds regarding life abroad, especially for couples, family, people. Or let me let me just narrow it down to like couple, husband and wife, precisely now. You know, when you are dating, the love is really, really at a certain degree or level. And uh, you believe, oh, that's how it's going to be forever. There won't be any change. It's going to keep going. Oh, I love this man. Oh, I love this girl. I love this woman. I love this. Or oh, where, we, where we are in year one, we, uh, year one of marriage, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Obviously, that is what we expected. That is what we think. But the thing is, it is easier said than done. It is easier said than done. When you get into the marriage, when you get on that boat, that is when you will know that it's not that easy. Don't let me deceive you. If anybody says, oh, my marriage has been this, I don't know. It could be, but I'm like, is it possible? Two different people from different backgrounds, different lifestyle, living together, and you're telling me everything is fine? You don't disagree? You don't fall out? <laughs> I think you're not, you not saying the truth there. In my own case, I always use myself as an example because myself as, as a case study is a typical and a practical approach to any case study. You know, when, I, when, when, when myself and my husband were dating, oh my goodness, we never, never quarrel for once. I, I can't remember when we are still back, when we are still together in Nigeria. He relocated before me and uh, we never quarrel. I can't remember. I think the one issue that caused a kind of like misunderstanding between us was something that needs to like really, really, really I really, really need to be annoyed because if I wear, if he was in my shoe, he's going to do that as well. But he realized his mistake and he really, really apologized. Or, you know, when, when you are dating and a, a man is at fault and he apologizes, a lady is at, is at fault and he apologizes without it causing any issue. You want to be like, oh, he's the best, she's the best. Oh, I love this man. He's got this behavior. I love him because of this story. <laughs> Maybe the love is still shocking, shocking, shocking. And the guy thinks, or the lady thinks, oh yes, no, nothing. Why are you starting me together? We oh, sorry. You might say sorry, she might say sorry, but not directly, I am sorry. The sorry will not come in another form. But you will know that he, he meant sorry. She's saying sorry. You say sorry, he say sorry, and that is that when you are starting. But now to living abroad, you will think the way you've started before children start coming in, you might think that is how it's going to be. Yes, that is what how it should be, or that is what it should be. But living abroad in another country with another rules and regulation, another policy, your own mindset, your own plans might not really work. That is why at times most people fall foul because... You, you, what you think is going to be your own kind of orientation, your own kind of plans might not really, really work in that new environment. And that's what I want to talk about. How living abroad affects marriage. Not that it is a abroad, the country you've moved into that, that's going to affect or that really, really want to affect the marriage. But because you need to adjust, you need to have a change, make a change. And when you're making a change, change is not something that is easy to adjust to. it is not easy you're going to sacrifice a lot of things just to have that change and uh, why sacrificing a lot of things might be left aside behind and in the process you're going to hurt someone directly or indirectly 
intentionally or unintentionally. When I moved in with my husband, oh my goodness, I thought the way we used to like doing mushy mushy when he, he would see me out, he would escort me to my house. I'm going to escort him back. <laughs> then you get where we're like, we're not going to head anywhere with all this back and forth, back and forth. So we have to, okay, let's stop here. You go, I go. So I was thinking, okay, when I come here, we're going to start from where we, we're going to continue from where we stopped. Story. No time. He's working. I'm not working. So he has to like fend for the family. So he's not there in terms of attention. He's not there. Not that he doesn't want to be present. But because we need to eat and we must survive. Rent must be paid. Bills must be paid. And the things has to be put in place. So and when that happens, your own mushy mushy, romantic, whatever, has to be older, my dear. Which one do you want? Do you want to starve? Or you want this? And you're like, ah, you know, things have to go. So, uh, this affects marriage. Because when this happens, you are drifting. Especially if the man, if the lady doesn't see reason why they have to balance it. If you don't balance, your, uh, your, balance issues in marriage, that is when you have issue. Because you, before you know it, you are already drifting apart from each other. The love life is almost there. The communication is breaking, like network is <laughs> breaking, and uh, you are not. You are not inter intimacy is is giving gap. Is having some holes in between, and that if you don't take note and quickly come back, that's how it's gonna be spreading. And before you know it, you could say that you don't even know your partner again. Because you are not in the light. Maybe it's the call. You're like, oh, look at what happened this morning. Look at this. But because it's working, because this is you are working, no time. The little time you have, you want to rest because you are tired. So what time do you have to like catch up to say, oh, uh, this is what happened at work today. Oh, this is what happened when you were not at home. Blah, blah, blah. And because of uh, when that happens, the communication is having a break, is having a gap, and it affects marriages. That is one. And uh, when kids now start coming, my dear, kids is the number one breaker of marriage. As they are blessing, <laughs> if you don't understand how to manage it, not the kids. I'm not saying the kids are, you know, are not blessings. Or they are the one that want to break it. If you leave all the responsibility of taking care of the children to your partner, to your husband, to your wife, ha, huh. because taking care of children is not easy. It is it is full time job. It is full time job. So if a man does, especially on the part of the man now, if they don't believe, oh my wife is working by taking care of the children, because I, I I've got a family friend that said, oh maybe if, if family members call him to say, oh we need this, we will say, oh I can't afford, you know my wife is not working. And the lady said she felt like, what do you mean I'm not working? I'm, I'm staying at home because I just had a baby and I'm taking care of the baby. And you don't sit at work and you're like, oh, I can't do it. You know, my wife is not working. What do you mean? And I'm like, what do you mean she's not working? So taking care of a baby is not work. She's at home because the baby is too tender. There's no way to put the baby. Or you think, oh, this baby is too little to put at uh, in a child. Yeah. And you are saying to be oh my wife is not working. That statement can be can be annoying, can be can can be painful if the lady doesn't understand or have that patience or have that maturity to really really process it well. And uh you believe you live alone very early, you've gone out to work and you want the house to be neat, to be tidied, shopping done by the lady food cooked by the lady because oh she's at home so you think when she's at home she's just sleeping 24 hours you forgot the fact that the baby's life depends on her she has to like be monitoring that baby 24 7 she must not the baby must not, must not maybe, if maybe the baby is in a stage where she's craw crawling she must guard that baby so the baby won't hurt him or herself must not go to where uh any hazard is and her eyes are on the baby 24-7. If she's got two to take care of, maybe one is already going to school. She needs to do school runs. 
and she must be and all her plans all her preps time must be must be planned timing is involved she can't wake up whenever she want to wake up because the baby the big one has to go to school and they've got resumption time and she needs to go with the other baby when i was when i was when my baby was still very very little and my my husband has to like go out like even when we don't have papers and then he has to go fend for the family i still have to wake up early because i need to dress the big one take the small one as well alone because i can't leave that one at home take him for three hours come back come and like quickly tidy up the house before i finish tidying up the house beating the other one it's time to go back again to pick the other one and I have to repeat the process again and the kind of house we live there is like all these staircase without lift so i'll take the buggy downstairs go and pick the take my maybe like the carrier bag in case the baby needs anything on the way or if i need to do shopping in between take it down now carry the baby hold the big one and start going down the staircase runs around put the baby in the buggy hold the other one and start going to the school come back take the baby upstairs first come back and pick the buggy because if you leave it you might not leave it there because where you've kept it downstairs is not your own apartment it's on your storage so you can't just leave any if you leave any item in the communal area it's going to take it away by the council or those in charge of that property like that and you think the baby is not working and if you if the husband now comes back and you think what have you been doing you didn't cook you didn't do this you didn't do that and you think that will not break the marriage because the lady is stressed she doesn't have her life she can't even sleep when she wants to sleep. Maybe she's sleeping and the baby is crying. She has to wake up, feed the baby. She has to provide, uh, cook for the family. She has to wash, uh, clean everywhere. And when you come back, you don't, and maybe you don't even check on them while you're at work because, oh, I'm at work. And you, and the lady's bored, only here with the babies, nobody to talk to. There's not even time because the little time you want to, you have, you want to quickly have, catch your sleep before the, children will wake up or will start with their routine again feeding them helping with them with assignment and you think oh she's not working so what is she doing because men believe some believes oh my wife is not working i'm like really she's not working she's not working. what is that and when you see all those awesome ways and you think it's not going to affect the marriage it is especially if the man doesn't see the reason why he has to balance life and say some soothing words sweet words to the lady to make him to make her know that we are in it together i understand you are taking care of the family taking care of the home while i have to provide and you don't see it as we are both working we are both doing things to keep the family growing or whenever you're at home you don't want to help with some house chores or because you are working and you believe oh but you're not doing anything why can't you do or the little time you have you want to go out with your friends I don't want to take the girl. I don't see the reason why you, should, you guys should have a family time or, 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 or on weekends. All this will affect the marriage. These are a broad life because we, we haven't got families, relatives that we have to look after those children. Everybody has gotten their own life. No, everybody's hands are full. There's no one you can keep them with. You might be lucky at times when you've got your uh, parents, your mom especially, that will come to help you look after those children for some months before they go back. Like when I had my first child, my mom was around before I had my baby then. And she helped me for like five months plus before she went back. I was a bit relieved. I didn't know about motherhood when she came because she was doing everything. But when she left, it dawned on me because I have to change the nappy. I have to know when, when the baby is like crying, I don't know what to, what to do. And my husband is not even there. Because he has to go to work. And I'm stressed that nobody is even here. He is not even around. I, and I will forget the fact that he has to go to work. But because I'm stressed up, I want to cast that question on him that, oh, you've gone out since. But I'm like, to be honest, I want to stop. But I'm like, I'm stressed as well. I'm stuck in this room. I can't go anywhere. Or if I need to go anywhere, I need to go with the kids. This affects marriage. I brought life. It affects marriage. Then, if you now have other issues you are facing, maybe your papers have not been sorted out, you have issues with job, it's going to kill every morale. Like in my own case, when I, when I realized that I've, run, I might, I've been refused and I don't have papers again, and like 
Now this is new me, new reality. I was not happy. It killed my libido. <laughs> I don't even want to do anything. I don't even have that. Ah, I don't have the passion to to make love because I was I was stuck in my own shadow. That this is me. I don't have papers. I can't walk. I, I, I might be deported if I'm caught. I can't do this. I can't do that. I was just thinking of many things that when would this be? No, no time frame that, oh, you don't worry, you're going to get it next day. No time frame. God, I was not happy. I didn't want to do anything. And that was affecting my marriage because I was drifting away. I was drifting apart. I didn't want to communicate. I was just there because I was not happy. Any little thing, I'm aggressive. Any little thing, I'm aggressive. Because I wasn't happy. And I was like, well, I'm not, is, why are you casting aggression on me? It's not my fault. I'm like, I, I know it's not your fault, but I'm not happy. Leave me. I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. And all these things are affecting marriages. Because you are overwhelmed with a lot of things. You are overwhelmed with your new circumstance. <sighs> if you don't, if you don't understand it and balance it, is that is how the marriage is going to break. And that is the reality of living abroad. Especially if you don't have anyone to support you morally, financially, emotionally, physically. Nobody to check on you. Oh my goodness. No friends. You don't even have clothes to wear. So we, we, where do you want to go? Even if there are parties to attend, you don't want to go because you don't have the means to appear there. And uh, you better just stay at home because you don't want to go there and you start thinking, hmm, this person is living large. This person has this thing. I don't have it. And you start thinking again. My goodness. When I was back, before I relocated, I knew the kind of life I was living. I was working and I love bags. My love for bags is now on, on another level. I don't know. Now when I came, I don't have papers. And my husband has to like, do so many jobs for us to survive. So and I, now I couldn't do the things I love. I couldn't buy the things I love. All those contributed to my to 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 my uh, aggression because I, I, I'm like it was like restrictions. So you put someone in a cage, and there was no means for me to break out. Even when I even when I go to church and I see people, I I could see fancy things, and I know that I can afford it, and I'm like. I will start the crying again. I will cry, cry, cry. <laughs> I will cry, cry, cry. Oh my goodness. Then I will remember what how I used to live back home. How I would buy and buy and buy and buy and buy things. And now I can't even buy it because I don't even have the money. <laughs> it got to a point. My bank wrote me that they're going to close my account because there was nothing coming going into the account. How? Why are we going to the account when I'm not working? What? Mm? No, these are things that breaks marriages if you don't manage it, if you don't show that love, if you don't go out, spend quality time, if you don't balance the house chores, and you think it is it is a woman's duty to do everything. Why you men believe because you are working, it shouldn't help. It's gonna break it, regardless of how you started. When you were still doing boyfriend and girlfriend, you were not living together. So you think, oh, you're just seeing each other maybe like once or twice or thrice in a week. And you think everything's going to be fine. That was my mindset. Then I used to work as a teacher. I had a colleague when I say, oh, I'm traveling to meet my husband. Ah, my husband can we do the for me. He said, story. He won't do it. I was like, what do you mean? I said, no, I trust my husband. He's going to do it. Story. My husband can. He can, he, he can cook on his own level. If you get what I mean. But I would say, no, don't worry. I will do the cooking. But there are some things I think, oh, because of the love, you're going to do this for me. You're going to do that for me. Mm, story. We will tell you, my dear, I've been out since morning. I've been working and working. When he comes, he want to sleep. Even before he gets to bed, he's already snoring. So when we even call him to sleep, and I want, I want to like, chit chat, chit chat, chit chat. He's not there. Because he's another world. He's tired. If you don't balance all this, it's going to break marriage. So that is the life of abroad people.
So at time when when I hear marriage has broken, I'm like, hmm, we need to examine something. Some things have been left undone. Some things have been have been disregarded. Some things are really really like, oh, let's come back. This thing is is gonna break us. And if you leave it for too long, it's gonna break everything. And we realize that the love is no more there. It's now decreasing instead of increasing. And that is how we could see that we, the love is no more. We are no more intact. Then when the children comes in, no time. Every attention has been diverted to them because you need to sort them out. Children will always take your time. If you don't realize, oh, I've got a partner. I've got my husband. I've got my wife there. You just Before you know it, time has gone and the love has flown away. And they're just like living like two people, colleagues, or like, um, I can't remember, in the house. All just because you didn't, you didn't balance it well. You, don't, you, you didn't really think, that, oh, this is my husband. The love must be there. The love wants to be there. But when a broad life eats you, bills, expenses, issues there and there, the love will first of all fl fly away. If, if you are if you are decided that really take cognizance of things, I'm like, oh wait a minute, something is happening. That's when you can okay, come back. Let's try to bring it back. Let's balance it. Let's understand each other. Let's help each other. With that, the love will now come back, and that's what we need to do. Please, if you don't want our marriage to break, we just have to like help each other, support each other, say certain words that's gonna help. Don't be over demanding. For this, I want me, myself, myself, and me, and my alone. And not thinking of the other person. No. We must understand each other's love language. It is not only until when you buy clothes for the lady, or when you buy gifts for the guy that you are showing love. Listen, understand what they want. We all, we, we all have gotten our own different love languages. My own love language is not you about, it's not about you buying me things. If you buy me, why won't I collect? It's my right. But... I want this me time. I want you to spend the time with me. I want you to listen to when, I, when I, I'm ready to do my parrot talk. Chi cha cho cho cho. Listen to me. With that, I'm good to go. Then help me with some things in the house. I'm, I'm good to go. I'm good to go. But if you don't understand my love language and you want me to love you more, it's going to be difficult for me because you're not helping me to love you. Okay. Thank you so much. That will be all for now this afternoon. Thank you for all the love. Please continue showing me the love. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I'll be back in my next video. Cheers and bye.